It is nighttime. A woman in her underwear and a jacket is running in a snowy forest. She looks scared, but manages to reach a bridge. Her hooded pursuer comes. But the woman, desperated now as there seems to be no way out of this nightmare, throws herself off the bridge and into the back of a big rig carrying wooden logs. Reports of missing women are heard throughout the beginning of the film. Something sinister is brewing here. Cut to Walter Marshall, a strong detective who enters his ex-wife Angie's house, wherein she argues with their daughter, Faye, about some posts on social media. Walter is overprotective with Faye and tells her to look out for strangers. Bottom line here is that men are pigs. Well, except Walter, as that is a motto he came up in order to protect his daughter. Later, what it seems like a pervert man trying to have sex with a young girl named Laura turns out to be a trap. The man gets knocked out by an accomplice of the girl whose name is Cooper. Back to Walter, who arrives at a crime scene where the body of the forced suicidal woman at the bridge has been found. Dead from hypothermia and her injuries, Walter deducts that the victim might have fallen from a bridge. Nice one, Sherlock, and asks to have all the bridges and gas stations checked along the route of the big rig. At the precinct, Walter informs Commissioner Harper and receives a rather awkward hug from Rachel, who is working as a profiler. Walter asks from Rachel to do a background check on some of his daughter's online friends. Walter is seriously aiming at getting the dad of the year prize. In the meantime, the pervert dude, Lara has lured, finds himself handcuffed to a bed. Cooper informs him that he won't be abusing any girls ever again, that his accounts have all been emptied with the money going to the abused girls, and also that he has castrated him in order to avoid further relapses. Sounds like a permanent sentence and the man can't do a thing about it. Walter spends some time with her daughter, even though he doesn't want her in his home because of his job. Cooper tries to bait another one of the sexual predators, but fails as he crushes his car and the police apprehend him. Laura is now at the mercy of the stranger and Cooper is taken to the precinct, where it is revealed that he used to be a judge, but stepped down when his family was murdered, and became a vigilante hunting down sexual offenders and punishing them the way he sees fit. Walter learns of the tracker Cooper has put on Lara in her earrings and steps in to assist in locating her. The signal from the tracker leads Walter and the police to a mansion. Walter enters the place through a window and hears music coming from the basement. Of course he descends to investigate and finds out an underground lair where a sick man is holding Lara and another girl whom he has busted her eardrum. Walter takes the sick dude out and rescues Lara and Julie. At the hospital, Rachel comforts Julie, one of the saved victims, while Walter advises Cooper and Laura of the risks their venture holds. He is scolded at by Laura, however, for the police inefficiency. Back at the precinct, the sexual offender is interrogated by Rachel. His name is Simon Stulls and refuses to say anything. Walter is presented with the instrument Simon made his victims deaf and snaps out. He bangs it on the table and scares the stool out of him. Rachel notices that Simon is deaf and can't hear what she is telling him. Wait, is he not the offender? The police turn the mansion upside down after which Walter informs Rachel that they have found a lot of unidentified DNA. He asks from Rachel to get what she can in order to bring closure to the dead victim's families. Later on, Walter has a moment with his daughter and talks about his childhood years. But everyone is completely oblivious of the fact that Poison gas is somehow released in the mansion, killing six police officers. In the morning, Harper attacks Simon, accusing him of the treacherous deed and wants to know who else was in the mansion with him. Simon cries like a baby and says that this is a game. Rachel tries to figure out what is going on and plays shrink with Simon. Simon is thought now as a tool as one of Rachel's colleagues, Matthew, dies in a car bombing. Walter sees clearly now that Simon was getting help and they all try to find clues that will lead them to Simon's accomplice. As it turns out, Simon's mother killed herself when he was a child. She used to work in a textile factory. Walter goes there but finds nothing except for a tennis ball on his hood, an indicative that the mastermind is watching them all. Cooper and Lara continue to run their crusade, despite Walter's objections. At the precinct, Walter and Rachel locate the man who sold the triggered explosive to the mastermind. 
Walter and a special unit storm the warehouse of the illegal manufacturer, who, learning that he has assisted a sexual predator, shoots himself dead. Meanwhile, Rachel follows an unconventional method to get what information she can from Simon. But if you play with fire, you get burned. Simon let out a few things before attempting to strangle Rachel. Soon afterwards, Rachel receives a mysterious package supposedly sent from Walter and Glassow, a police technician, finds out that his baby had been kidnapped by the mastermind. Rachel opens the box and reads a note that raises red flags. An evacuation order is issued then at the police precinct as there is a potential threat for a bomb. Following the mastermind's orders to save his baby, Glasso gets Simon out. Walter realizes too late that the bomb threat was a decoy and rushes to the precinct. He sees that Simon has got away and goes to the box where the bomb is thought to be. The bomb squad opens the box and inside they find Alicia, Glasso's baby. Glasso runs to see her and sees her lying there still, not breathing at all. But, thank God Alicia is alive and Glasso takes her away to safety. Walter, scared to death for his own daughter, runs to Angie's house and hugs Faye. He says he worries for her, and although he sees her as his weakness, she is also his strength and his light in this dark world. Not wanting to take any chances, Walter sends his family away to keep them safe. Rachel suspects that Simon's father is the mastermind. They locate him and see Simon has stabbed him multiple times with a knife. Walter handcuffs the lunatic and Simon keeps repeating that he wants his bear. He tells Rachel that he had hurt the girls in the basement and is inclined to reveal more if he gets his teddy bear back. Rachel stuffs the teddy in his mouth and Walter takes him back to the precinct. Simon tells Rachel everything about his victims and Cooper discovers that Simon has been in his house. Laura is abducted again and Cooper shouts about it on Walter and Commissioner Harper. Rachel holds her breath as Simon has peed all over his cell, but still manages to ask him about Laura's whereabouts. Dirty Simon says that Laura is still alive, but her time is running out. In order to reveal more, he says that he must apologize to the world out there. Harper takes him outside the precinct, but Simon taunts them all. He is then being taken away as the police use all of their resources to track down Laura and the mastermind. Cooper follows the car where Simon is and bumps into it, causing it to crush. He takes Simon out and kicks him, asking him where Laura is. He is unaware, though, of another car that stops nearby and an officer coming at him. The man shoots him and Simon laughs as he goes to kiss his twin brother. Cooper is dumbfounded by this revelation, but not for very long as the evil Simon shoots him again and kills him. Walter is the only one who has figured this out, but again too late. He drives to the scene only to find Cooper dead and Rachel abducted by the twin horrors. Walter's only lead now is the word Winterbug. Watching the footage of Simon's mother, Walter notices something peculiar on the teddy. Taking it from the cell, he finds a tracker that leads him to an isolated lake. There, Rachel and Laura are covered under tarps and drenched with gasoline. Walter drives to the place as the twin men light up tennis balls and throw them at the tarps in a sort of sick contest of who will burn his victim first. But they keep failing, and eventually Laura gets out and assists Rachel, whose bag has caught fire. The police arrive shortly after, and the twins flee. Walter sees that Laura and Rachel are all right and give Rachel a gun, promptly leaving to pursue the criminals. Rachel breaks the news to Laura that Cooper is dead, and then goes after the twins. The cunning weasels that Simon 1 and 2 are allow them to outsmart some of the officers. Walter turns off his flashlight and opens his ears. Simon 1 hits Rachel and they fight. He goes to strangle her but hears his brother whimpering. Walter holds Simon 2 in the middle of the frozen lake and draws Simon 1 who is pointing his gun at Rachel out in the open. A partial standoff is now at hand. Simon wants his twin brother released but Walter plays him cleverly and succeeds in getting Rachel away. Walter sends Simon 2 to his brother but gets shot and falls down. The twins reunite but the ice breaks under their feet and they both fall into the freezing water, ultimately dying a horrible death. A little while later, Laura gets her chance to say goodbye to Cooper, while Walter brings Rachel for Faye to meet. Truth be told, Faye isn't very thrilled with Rachel as she suspects that she may be her father's girlfriend and sends her to sit in the back seat. Walter smiles and drives away with them. Thanks for watching guys, if you like this video please consider subscribing to our channel.
I'll be back with another interesting movie recap. Until then, take care.